just joining us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel Television. A reminder of our top stories. Former Vice President Atiku Babuka returns to the People's Democratic Party four years after leaving the party, says the APC can no longer meet the aspirations of Nigerians. President Mamadou Buhari expresses condolences to families of victims of the bomb attack in Biu, which left at least 13 people dead. The federal government assures residents of the federal capital territory and other parts of the country of adequate security measures to guarantee their safety. And U.S. President Donald Trump lashes out at the FBI as he issues fresh denial over the role of one of his aides, Michael Flynn, in the Russia probe. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com slash channelsweb. Log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. The Channel TV and Channel 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You'll also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. And here are a few pictures that you sent in to our portal. Let's take a look at them, shall we? We begin with a picture from the Lagos Ibado Expressway. We see the core marshal of the road safety uh, of the road safety, Boboye Oyeyemi, and other men of the corps arresting a driver for improper conduct and wrong documentation. Our eyewitness reporter commends the efforts of the road safety corps but wants them to do more, especially during this festive period. Our next picture is from Delta State. We see primary school pupils sitting on stones as furniture in the classroom. Eyewitness reporters calling on the state government to do something about this to create a conducive learning environment for these pupils. Our next image is from a Civic Center in Guagualada area of the federal capital territory. This is what is left of shops, which our eyewitness reporter says were demolished by men of the Guagualada Area Council. According to him, shop owners are still lamenting their losses. Our journey tonight ends here in Lagos State, Ikorodu Road, Ikorodu area. We see people, our eyewitness reporter says, are from Onward Community Development Association protesting alleged indiscriminate disconnection of power by men of the Ikeja Electricity Distribution Company. He wants them to restore their power. Thanks for sending in those pictures and please keep them coming. The Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project has sent an open letter to President Mahmoudou Buhari requesting him to revisit and refer the allegations of corruption in the privatization of public enterprises in Nigeria between 1999 and 2011 to the EFCC and the ICPC for further investigation. In the letter signed by the Executive Director of SERAP, Adito Kumbo Mumuni, the organization urged the President to reform the Bureau of Public Enterprise to remove opportunities for corruption in privatization process and to instruct the EFCC and the ICPC to ensure the recovery of proceeds of corruption. SERAP went a step further by threatening to begin legal proceedings to compel the government to act if the President does not take the requested action within 14 days of receipt of the letter. Pensioners and the agitations have become a common sight in most states of the Federation. While some states are making efforts to pay the backlog salaries being owed the pensioners, some others say the areas were inherited and will therefore take some time to clear. Our next report examines how pension administration system has evolved over the years and some of the con controversies that have trailed them. In 1979, the federal government of Nigeria introduces the first Pension Reform Act of 102. The act is to consolidate all enactment and pensions and gratuity scales devised for public officers. 
In 1993, the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, NSITF, was established to take over the NPF scheme and provide enhanced pension scheme to private sector employees. The Pensions Act 103 of 1979 consolidated all enactment dealing with pension, disability benefits, and gratitude scales devised for the armed forces, public service organizations established by decree in the federal and edict in the state operated pension schemes similar to what obtains in the civil service. An executive bill, the Pension Reform Bill, was submitted to the National Assembly on September 2003. The bill aimed to repeal all existing pension schemes, including the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, and replace it with a contributory and privately managed pension scheme. The Senate, on the 23rd of March 2004, passed the Pension Reform Bill, and the President signed it into law on the 25th of June 2004. The implementation of the Act began on the 1st of July 2004. The Act has brought about fundamental changes to the structure of leaving service benefits and the way they are provided for. The Act in Section 1 establishes a contributory pension scheme for any employment in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The scheme ensures that every worker, public or private, receives his retirement benefits as at when due. Recently, there have been revelations of multi-billion Naira pension fund scandals at the pensions units of the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation and the Nigeria Police Pensions. The fact remains clear that there exists a pension fund fraud syndicate in Nigeria. The syndicate includes highly placed retired and current political office holders and retired serving senior civil servants inclusive of legislators. So. Uh, in essence, pension fraud was perpetrated by public officials to siphon colossal amounts in conjunction with and with the active connivance of the Nigerian Union of Pensioners, Director of Pension Accounts, State Pension Boards, and the Association of Federal Public Service Retirees, among others. As soon as funds are... The Deputy Director Accounts Pension Transitional Arrangement Directorate, Mr. Williams Dogo, explains further what has been put in place to ensure all pensioners get their entitlements after retirement. Petard, as he came to on board in 2013, is working tirelessly to ensure that pensioners get their entitlement, rightful entitlement on time. Right now, we have, we inherited over 230,000 pensioners on their payroll, and uh, their monthly pension has been regular and is on time when funds are released. The President's Pensioned Operators of Nigeria gives solutions to the problems of waiting forever before retirees can access their benefits. I think Peter is doing a fantastic job now. They're streamlining and um, getting data and uh, putting proper records to the um, people who are entitled to pension um, and I believe that as these records become more um, fine-tuned it will become easier for people in the old pension scheme to um, get their pension but primarily the real challenge is funding. Payment of pensions, arrears and benefits has been a big challenge in the country. For these reasons, experts believe there's a need for PENCOM to be strengthened as an institution to enable it to carry out its operations more effectively. Also, investment institutions need to be expanded so as to improve the opportunities for investors and also be more transparent to allow pensioners across the country benefits after contributing towards their retirement. Joining me now, the news at 10 to discuss the challenges of the pension administration in Nigeria is Channel Television's economic intelligence analyst, Babajide Okunso. Well, thank you for joining us. It's been a while, actually, oh, since. It's been a while you were on the news at 10, anyway. So, this is a perennial problem, and why is it? There are several ways we could look at this, and that's first, there's, there's the hypothesis that a lot of these pensioners are old and are not as literate as they should be. But again, is that really true, Omar? That's the question I'm asking. Is it really true? So let's look at the evidence. The evidence shows that only 10% of Nigerians live above the age of 50. Only 10% of Nigerians. In the next two weeks, the precedent will be 75. The evidence shows that less than 2% of Nigerians make it to that age. So the challenge today is a lot of young people are contributing 
into the pension pool, into the retirement savings account, but because they are contributing at an early age and they never really leave to use the funds that they've contributed into, it creates a big pool of so much money. So that is where the challenge is. A lot of contribution comes in, but very few monies leave the pool. You're talking about the young people. What about the old people who have been working and who should be receiving some form of gratuity at the end of their service? So the challenge is because a lot of young people are contributing, the system has been created in such a way that the ideal age for you to be able to access those funds, are, you should be 50 year old. Um, and then whoever has contributed money should get some lump sum, 25%, and then you could also get an annuity. But the challenge is because there's so much money on pension, service-wide votes, for instance, in the 2018 budget, 212 billion naira. That is where the challenge is. And the question we should ask ourselves today is, why is there so much noise about pensions? That is the real question. Why is there so much noise? And that is because today, pensions are life. Now, I'll give you an example. We have seen this popular advert from the telecommunication firm that says data is life. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, data is life for young Nigerians, but for the pensioners, pension is life. Today we have 3.6 trillion assets sitting in the savings deposits of all commercial banks, 3.6 trillion. But if you look at how much money is in the pension assets, 7.1 trillion now. So today we've got more money sitting on the assets being managed as pensions than money sitting in savings. So indeed, pension is life. Pension is really so important that even the Constitution guarantees a life pension for the President and the Vice President. Would you be talking about the Pension Reform Act of 2004 and 2012, uh, which doesn't seem to have ended the challenges of these pensioners? So what really is the problem here? Do we need to review or is it a problem of implementation? We need to do both. Just as we've always reviewed the Constitution, even right from 1922, 1946 down to 1999, there will always be a need to review the Pension Reform Act. But we'll also need to even implement it better. And the main focus of our implementation should be how many Nigerians can really access their pensions. Like I said again, if only 10% of Nigerians are living above the age of 50, then how quickly can they access those funds? So most often what happens is they get the, they pass on and then their families attempt to make use of these funds. In the UK, for instance, that has similar pension system, the life expectancy is 81 year old. In the US, life expectancy is 79. They have but, higher life expectancy. So higher, higher life expectancy and then you can retire and then process your pensions. The challenge today is we have a lot of young people contributing and indeed we all, a lot of old people that should get their pensions are not getting their pensions because the, there's possibly huge, huge fraud in the system. Yeah, I, I do suppose so because I, well, I've had a little experience with uh, collecting pensions for my mother and we know the troubles we're going through right now, but is there any evidence that there could be up to 3 trillion naira illegally diverted in pension funds? So we've heard that figure flying in from all the Mena Gates kind of potentially 3 trillion naira, but the evidence today does not support it because if we look at all the monies in private sector demand deposits, that's the current account, all the money you and I have in savings accounts, only 3.6 trillion naira. So all the money that private individuals do have even in their savings account, all of us, 3.6 trillion naira. So it doesn't look or suggest that a lot of those monies or 3 trillion naira scam exist in the pension for all, oh yes, what we should probably be looking at is billions of naira, but the evidence doesn't support that there's possibly up to 3 trillion naira in the banking system that is related to pension fraud. Yes, there'll probably be some money, but those monies will certainly not be up to three trillion as alleged. What do you think? Would we be, will we have access to our own pensions when we're done with our own service? We should ask ourselves, will we even be able to live up to oh, 55? I, we hope to live up to 75. We, we do hope, we do hope, <laughs> we do hope life expectancy increases. But when we're to talk about pension fraud, then we need to also look at where are most of this pension money is located. And if you study the 2018 budget, for instance, you look at military pensions, we have 65 billion now in military pensions. If you look at the police formation 
command and their headquarters. You've got 17 billion naira in that as well. And you look at customs, immigration, and prison service, approximately 7 billion naira. Now, clearly, the challenge is the police says they need to employ more people. If they employ more people, then their own contribution to the pension scheme or their demand for contribution also increases. So clearly, when we're looking at pension fraud and how we want to manage it, we start from the top. Look at which mm -hmm. ministries and agencies are getting the highest pensions while we also keep an eye on those other universities and other systems and institutions that also have lower pensions. But this is not the end of the pension challenges we face. You always have a lot to say about GD, and I know you'll be back to talk about this. This, this doesn't end the discussion. We'll talk further much later, probably at another time, on the News at 10. Thanks a lot. And when the News at 10 returns, our community report tonight looks at the plight of residents in Anwai community in Edo State over the state of infrastructure in the area. Do join us again.